Welcome, citizen, to another StarCraft Nation broadcast. This is your host, Venerati. In today's segment, we're going to be covering Gnaw number two. This is the Diamond Tier. So we are bound to have a great game. Now, this is the... This game was picked by the winner of the tournament to be cast as the other one I had to pick because he didn't pick it himself. Or wait, no, it was actually the other way around. Scythe ended up picking his, but the winner of this one didn't, so I picked it as this was one of the better ones as I actually saw this was a pretty interesting game and I had to cast this one. So we are going to see Kent Trolla as the Blue Terran and we're going to have Copperhead spawning as the Teal Protoss. Of course, we are on... Oh my, what is this? Lost Temple! Yeah, that's right, boys and girls. We're on Lost Temple. As the other one was on Lost Temple as well. And a lot of matches go on Lost Temple because Lost Temple is actually pretty damn awesome. And I hear a lot of people talk about it as sort of, you know, what... what race is favored on each map and I hear a lot of people say Terran and the reason why I hear or the reason cited as Terran is being so OP on this map is this nice little piece of real estate right up here and you know what that is right there that's that natural right there and you just stick a nice little tank or you stick a Thor and they can range in on the Nexus in this case or just basically the command center or whatever the hell it is that you've got down there and they can just lay waste to it and it's kind of a pain to get to clear this if you are not ready. And um, I guess we have some lol cats going on down here. I don't know. I I've also kind of heard recently. I read something about uh, cats and nerds, and that all nerds have cats, and that's why there's cats are so popular on the internet. Don't know, but this is just really exemplifying that because apparently both these guys have cats. So totally getting distracted here. But either way, we do have controller blocking off the main gateway. Sorry, I'm going to have fun with that uh, that name today. As he is going to be putting up the supply depots up here. I'm not really sure why he's doing this. Is he is going up against a Protoss and even a two-gate. Uh, yeah, these, these supply depots, they did get buffed. They used to be 350, but they are still just wafer thin as it's just like a tin hut or there you go, three little pigs. It's a straw hut and all you got to do is come over there and with a slight gust of wind and blam, you are through and cleaving into some Marines. However, we do have a very braze SCV coming over here, and it is scouting out Copperhead Space for Controller. And Controller is about to have the favor returned by this nice little probe, but the probe is not going to be able to get in as Controller is going to use his Marine and lay some hell down on this probe, but it did not actually take any damage because it's got those super awesome shields, and it shall mend itself and return back to its nice flock. And actually, no, it's not. It's going to sit here by the Zelnaga Tower and probably die later on. A pretty grisly death. As we do have a mule online for Controller. Controller doing a really good job. Well, Controller just doing what turns do, I guess, as these mules are really, really powerful. As it is able to really bridge the, the gap, as you would generally see, as the Protoss are able to chrono boost out their economy. I believe Copperhead was doing that earlier, as he's not maintained a constant chrono boost. Not even choosing the chrono boost as Warp Gate, as Copperhead could benefit from doing that. However, we do see a... We see a 1-1-1 build from a Protoss player here, as we did see Copperhead throw down the Gateway, Cyber, and Robo, so we might be seeing some early Immortals anticipating a 3 racks push, maybe, but that is not what Controller is doing. Controller is using his factory to the max and is building the Tech Lab here. He's going to be jumping that Tech Lab, or jumping the start port over to the Tech Lab, probably going to be throwing either a Raven or a Banshee, probably a Banshee, as you do see Banshees a hell of a lot more than you do see Ravens out here. We do see a second one coming down here, so we're probably going to see a Thor or... No, not this, or this. He does not have an, uh, he does not have an armory coming down, but he'll probably see a tank. As we, actually, yes, we do see a Banshee coming down, so that we are going to see some Banshee harass on Copperhead. So Copperhead is going to have to deal with that in some form or fashion. However, we do see the Observer coming down, which the Observer is great. I believe mo all Protoss players should be using the Observers. They are your little eye in the sky. But the key fact is those Observers are able to neutralize the Banshee advantage of Cloak. A uh, two Stargate Cloak Banshee push can be really devastating if you don't have anything to, to reveal the Cloak, which at this level you don't really catch that many players off guard, but you do see that still sometimes. It's just a really, it's a really shitty way to lose as you're sitting there and you're like, woo, I'm going to pump out an army, and then all of a sudden you lose because you don't have the Cloak, uh, or you don't have, you can't see anything that's invisible. So can be frustrating. That's why you should have always, always, always have something that can see, uh, see those 
crazy invisible units, and we actually will see a Raven coming. So it's pretty rare to see a Raven this early on. I'm not really used to seeing it that much. Wow, look at the saturation on it. That is just beautiful. Either way, this Raven is really going to be able to help uh, control it out because he's not going to have to waste his scans to kill these damn observers. As, as a Terran player, it's just so annoying to have these observer camping out on your base because you got to either choose to waste the scan on it or just let it kind of peek over your base and just really neuter the effectiveness of this little powerful peninsula power uh, peninsula of power damn use your words boy as we do see it sitting up here and this mortal is just going to be able to lay some hell down on this now the stalkers do not have blink if they did have blink they'd really be able to persecute this advantage that the controller has right now controller desperately trying to get these bunkers up in time as these bunkers will be able to be sniped and these these supply depots are going to be sniped right here now I'd like to see Control actually. Control does a really good job placing that auto turret right there, really putting up some sort of defense as he really does need it right now. Now, the forces are pretty even, but this Immortal is really going to do a great job of busting open this bear, uh, this bunker and just is really tearing it open and getting that juicy center that is those Marines. Now, we do have this medevac getting pretty ballsy coming out here because we do have cover up and moving up the ramp ever so slightly, trying to ping on this barracks as now Controla is actually supply locked. So great job by Copperhead here, sniping those supply depots, not just walking away from this engagement empty-handed as he was able to clear out a lot of this, was able to kill those Hellions off early on. We do see the Hellions throwing down some fire as we do see the Stalkers replying to all of the uh, all of the engagement right there as we did see a couple of them go down right there. So really even right now. Let's go take a look at the Lost Tab as they are, yes, exactly dead even as far as resources go. We do see another auto turret coming down for Controller. So Controller using the Raven to its max as I would like him to see... I would like to see him hunt down this observer as this observer as they are very useful they are so easy to kill I mean they have 60 HP I mean you can just pop that thing like no one's business however control is not really going after this observer with as much persecution as I'd like to see however Copperhead is bringing the Nexus down so Copperhead taking advantage of his push however he is not taking advantage of the chrono boost this is shame on you Copperhead as he has 88 points for Chrono boosting radiate inner mana on his Nexus. However, we do see Controla will be going after this Observer. Will he be able to get it? And, oh, maybe. Come on. You want to do it? Yes. There we go. Ha ha. So now, Controla doing a good job of using that Raven and popping that dirty little eye blister that floats around in the sky as we do see a Robotics Bay coming online. So, Copperhead is going to be anticipating the bio ball that is going to be forming from controller as he does have most of his units are in fact that we don't see any vikings on the field for controller at this moment and we don't see an expansion um controller is really going to be backing himself in a corner if he does not choose to expand sometime soon as we do actually see him bring on a command center so i believe that is what he is thinking however i'm not psychic so i really don't know as we do see shields coming on for controller so controller is going to be using a lot of marines and we do see a server just leaving right there and we do see another Observer coming online. So, Copperhead is going to continue to keep the espionage up. And he is just doing a really good job of getting his economy up and running right now. As he is populating the second, or his first expansion right there. So, that natural is going to be online. We're only seeing three gates right now. So, I, I really feel that he could get a third or maybe a fourth gate. Now, I like this position right here. As Copperhead does have full battlefield awareness. And is anticipating this Banshee. And watch this Banshee. This Banshee is about to get wrecked. And, oh, oh, that's right, run away, but it's not going to be enough. Boom, there she goes, as her day was just ruined. Good job of Copperhead using those units, putting them there. I don't know necessarily about the Immortals needing to be there. Maybe he could even throw them up here on the, the power of Peninsula. I'm, I'm not going to be able to coin that if I keep screwing it up. Either way, the Peninsula of Power, good God, can't use my words. Either way, Controller is going to be moving out a little bit. It looks like he is about ready to fly this orbital command over. And let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, production tab. Is we do see Thermal Lance coming on, and we do see Pre-Igniter. So I'm not really sure about the Pre-Igniter, as I don't really feel that the Hellions are going to be super, super effective against the Zealot Immortal Stalker mix that we do have going. No, I'm not playing. I didn't I didn't make it that far. It's actually, I was part of this tournament in the early rounds. Um, I was just really fodder as I totally did get my head kicked in on this matchup. So there are some pretty good players, as I don't really count myself as a stellar player, but I think a 1900 level diamond player is what I went up against or something like that. Either way, it was a lot of fun, and I hope this uh, match has been entertaining for y'all so far, as we are seeing a quite a buildup of forces, and we are hopefully going to have some sort of action coming up here relatively soon, as we do have more uh, Ravens here 
for Controller as we do see a third Raven just finishing up here. Now, I'm surprised that we haven't seen Hunter Seeker missiles, as Hunter Seeker missiles are so, so dangerous, especially when you get the upgrade from, let's see, we did not actually have the Engineering Bay upgrade, but you just see the durable materials upgrade coming on there as they are that much more resilient, and they are harder to snipe, as you can actually snipe the Hunter Seeker missiles, which, I mean, obviously a lot of you do know that. And if you don't, there you go, blam, you learn something new every day, as we will see... Five, a total of five gateways coming on for Copperhead. So Copperhead is going to be able to utilize the income that he is getting from the natural expansion there as we do have a really exposed Colossus. But, I mean, you can just take a look at those sexy slender legs right there. And it does look like Copperhead is going to be coming over here and clearing away these destructible rocks. Yes, and he is going to be doing that as the... Look at that range, though. God, that range is awesome. This Thermal Lance upgrade was completed for Copperhead, so Copperhead is really going to be able to slice into this bio ball right here, but of course now these Ravens can really turn the table here, especially if it gets a Hunter Seeker missile, as he, as Copperhead will be forced to micro down those Hunter Seekers, and if he doesn't get them, then they're just going to wreak havoc. Also, he doesn't have Blink, so he can't Blink away from them. So we do have Copperhead moving out here. It does look like we are going to have an engagement here, as we do have the Observer kind of skirting the outside. So Copperhead learned from the earlier uh, mishap of letting the Observer getting taken down. And right now, let's go take a look at the Army Tab. As they do engage, as we see a little bit of uh, Hellion Fire going down there. And we do see the defense, point defense, great use of those point defense. The point defenses are so powerful in taking out all of these uh, shots from the Stalker. But the Stalker are uh, migrating down these Ravens, as the Ravens are not frontline units. Controla is not doing a very good job of controlling his units in this fashion, but we do see some auto turrets being queued up, but luckily being dismissed as we do see them stimming, trying to snipe these Colossus as the Colossus were just tearing into these units. Let's go take a look at the kill count. Let's see, do five kills, ten kills, two kills. So most of the kills that were uh, inflicted on Controla were actually from those Colossus. So we do see another Colossus joining this army, and we do see the point defense uh, turrets doing a good job of taking out s some of those shots, trying to neuter the DPS. And we do see slight uh, micro on those, which you see two of them fall and the third ball right there. So, Control it kind of backed up in a corner right here. He needs to do make something happen here. He needs to snipe these Colossus. We do see one Colossus coming down. These, these Medivacs trying their best to make the uh, healing rays rain down on their little buddies right there. But all of the Ravens got sniped right there. Controller having to retreat back into his main as Copperhead is just pushing in here. And there's nothing on the table for Controller to really uh, retaliate in this as the natural is going to be taken out from controller, so controller is going to lose that income here. And yeah, controller is really not looking so great. He is down, and I am thinking that he is out as he is trying to float his orbital command away. Trying to get away from the Colossus. Colossus, God, 13 kills right there. Boom, another Colossus coming up here. He is really exposed right there, but that, uh, that orbital command did die right there, showering the little bits all over those land forces. His controller is pushing out one more time, trying to ward off Copperhead, but Controla does see the futility of it as there were more reinforcing units coming up here. So Controla does end up losing this game against Copperhead. Copperhead does end up and goes to win the non-number two diamond tier as Copperhead did do a good job overall. And Controla unfortunately didn't control his units appropriately. And I really feel that that was the, once again, the micro from Controla was where he falters. Those those Ravens could have really been a lot more dangerous and a lot more powerful than how they were utilized. But either way, both did a both guys did a great job, better job than I would have done at this point, as I am woefully out of practice right now. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this. There will be no br uh, bronze silver from this uh, from non number two, as the winner did not save his replay. So if you want me to uh, cast your replays, you got to save them. Either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, citizens, stay safe.